Hello everyone and welcome back once more to Anime Yay or Nay. I am the Outback Al. I'm Yun and Young. I'm Shibi Noob. I'm Envy Jitters. I'm Chiron Cosplay. And I'm Cozy. And we have a very special Anime Yay or Nay for you today. We we've decided that on this Halloween, we weren't going to watch anything, and we decided instead we're going to talk about stuff. We always talk about stuff, but we're going to talk about something a little bit different this time. We are doing a zombie apocalypse survival debate. It's it's this little weird... I, for a while ago, there was a meme that went around on the internet, might still be around here and there, uh, where you would fill out eight brackets for your zombie survival team. Uh, they could be from any sort of media and whatnot, but we decided, uh, you know, why not do that for anime characters? So, uh, me, Envy, Cozy, we all came up with anime characters that we think will help us survive the apocalypse, uh, should it happen, with zombies, and yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna debate them and see who's, uh, got the best team, and we have Chibi, Yin, and Cece here to judge us and, you know, judge us hard. So hard. Judge you, we will. I'm judging you so hard right now. Well, that's nothing different from normal then. Kinky. So. I mean, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna be going uh, by each category for um, the zombie survival team. We have the position for the team leader, the brawler, the uh, weapons expert, the brains, the medic, the speed fighter, the mascot, and the guy who dies first, because there's always a guy who dies first. So, we're gonna be doing this, uh, if anyone's seen, uh, Screen Junkies movie fights before, it's a little bit like that. We're gonna have, uh, opening statements about each of our characters. That it's just gonna be a free-for-all debate, where we go back and forth, figuring out who is the best among them. And then we're gonna have some closing statements, and then our esteemed panel of judges will render who made the best decision for that position. And we'll just keep going like that, and eventually we will have a winner. So... We'll see how this goes. Uh, let us know if you actually end up enjoying this episode, and maybe we'll do more of them. I don't know. Uh, but I feel like there's a lot of different things we could have debates about here. So, without further ado, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna hand over control to Chibi, who will be moderating our uh, debate. Chibi, any opening words for us? I mean, all I really have to say is uh, keep it to the point as much as you can. I know we're going to have some room for debate, mm -hmm. but let's try not to let it go too long. Because um, I I know some of you like to argue. Yes. I'd wow. rather not have to deal with <laughs> three fucking hours of that. We'll try to keep tangents to a minimum because, I mean, if there's one thing that we've been doing lately. Great. <clears throat> Yin, you got any words? I think you covered it. Okay, CC. <laughs> uh, do you want me to keep minutes? Uh, maybe if you want to. All right. Uh, um, also, so... is everybody prepared to like give a bit of details about the yeah. characters? Because I don't have a lot of experience with anime. All right. Before so... we hop into it, why don't we explain some rules? Yeah, sure. Uh, do you want me to take this? I mean, yeah, sure, this is so, kind of your thing, so I'm just here to make sure y'all don't, you, you know. You're here to mom, we get it. Yes. So, we had a couple caveats about the characters we were allowed to choose. They had to be from anime, obviously, but uh, beyond that, you know, so we didn't stack our teams with, like, Goku and other people who would end a zombie apocalypse in the blink of an eye. We had the caveats of, uh, you know, you couldn't have superpowers of any kind or supernatural abilities, magic, anything like that was pretty much uh, pretty much a no-go. We were only allowed to choose one character per series. That way we didn't just stack the deck with a team that, like, you know, might already have experience with each other, stuff like that. And uh, they were not allowed to be in a show that had zombies or a zombie equivalent because it's kind of an unfair advantage. So those were the main ones. Um, and I think we also, the judges ruled in advance that these characters will be coming in with n some basic gear that they might have on them at any given point in time, you know, because people carry stuff. We didn't want to throw people into the zombie apocalypse naked. That might be the cruelest thing of all. But they're also not going to be coming into this, like, fully armed, ready for battle. Yeah, just, just anything... what they would have with them yeah, on any, a day-to-day -day basis. Any given Sunday, you know? Is that the Al Pacino movie? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, I know it's a line from Gold Digger. Yeah. All right. So, anything else before we get started? No. Nope. Uh, we went through a pretty extensive vetting process choosing these characters. Yeah, we but had if to we do... fucked up on one of our own rules, call us on it. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, why don't we uh, why don't we get into it? All right. Team leaders. Uh, I believe we're starting off with Cozy for this one. Yes. So, I chose Armin from Attack on Titan as my team leader. And this is a little bit spoilerish for those who haven't watched the last season yet, but Armin was chosen as like humanity's hope for leading the core over Erwin. So he's very adept running an entire army. Okay. I believe Envy, you're next. Yes, for my team leader, I am choosing Hyoin Kiyoma, also known as Okabe Rintaro from the Steins Gate franchise. He's obviously the esteemed leader of the future Gadget Laboratory, but in all seriousness, his adventures throughout the original Steins Gate as well as Steins Gate Zero, always looking for a plan, always thinking on his feet, and always willing to do whatever it takes to get the job done or whatever he needs him to do, whatever it needs him to do. That's why I chose him to be my uh, team leader, because I think he has what it takes to do what needs to be done to survive a zombie apocalypse. Okay, Al? I chose Masato Katsu... Fuck. <laughs> Try that again. <laughs> I chose Masato Katsuragi... Katsu God damn it. Masato from Evangelion. Katsuragi. God damn it. You know what? Out the gate. Bad time. Anyway, Masato is not bad out the gate because she has military leadership experience. She has a ton of combat training and a number of other skill sets that are going to be very useful during the zombie apocalypse. She's also adept at wrangling teenagers, which I guarantee you is even more difficult than wrangling your five cats together to get a photo shoot. We want to try that, by the way, at some point. I think that'd be really fun. And on top of all of that, she's able to deal with all of her own responsibilities and trying to help stop the end of the world while dealing with her own personal trauma and uh, let's just call it high-functioning alcoholism. All right. I would like to make a comment. We yes. have yet to do a photo shoot with all five cats. Uh, so far, three has been challenging enough. Well, mm. let me tell you something. And if we're getting into the debate right now, Masada will be able to do it. Because, I mean, if you... If, she can keep her cool under any sort of pressure. She, Whether it's aliens, teenagers, her ex who reminds her of her dad, all sorts of other stuff. I mean, she's just ready to go and always on point whenever you need her. Okay, see, I would like to counter that because go for it. she's only good at sending others, mainly children, to do her dirty work for her. Oh, is that what you're saying? I disagree entirely. There was one point where the Americans were trying to build an AVA unit that was supposed to be autonomously driven, uh, and she, after it went on a rampage, put on a suit to go into the nuclear core of this thing by herself to take it down. So she is more than willing and ready to go out in the field and, and deal with the situation on herself, or while leading a team. She can do both. She can do it all. She's the whole package. As for... Armin, I'm going to be honest with you here. Um, he's not the person I would pick for a leader. And I don't know as far as like how far into the future we have to go to make Armin actually decent. But like I could see him maybe as a brain sort of person, maybe as like a uh, an advisor to a, a leader. But I don't know anyone at the point where I'm Armin? at where anyone respects him enough to do that. And I mean, you got some personalities okay. on your team who are going to be very much going after him. Listen... You have not caught up with Attack on Titan, and again, this is spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched the final season yet. Speaking of... Armin is the one who saves the world. Cool. Does he have superpowers at that point? Because I don't he think does he, does not he use has superpowers at that point. He does not use the superpowers. He does not use the superpowers to save the world. Whether he uses the superpowers or not, can I get a ruling from the judges? If he has superpowers at that time, is he legal? Okay, how exactly did he save the world? I know it's spoilery, but I have to know. Yeah, it, yeah. it's kind of important. So, oh god, this is going to be a tangent right out the gate. It's all right. It's, so, not really. it's on point. It's not yeah. too much of a tangent. I mean, we um, do kind of need to know the details in order to make a fair judgment here. It's like I want to know how far into Attack on Titan has everyone seen? 
one season. Oh, I'm still in the middle of the coup arc right now. Oh, Jesus. So I do- also, guys. I don't care. <laughs> okay, so basically uh, the walls, it's just an island. Yeah. And they are an allegory for the Jewish people during the Holocaust. Okay. Armin single-handedly takes down Nazi Germany equivalent, establishes open and fair trade in a very racist world against the citizens of Paradise Island. And then Aaron goes on a genocidal fucking freak out, and Armin is the only one who can figure out how to stop him. Namely, that was him going into Aaron's head and being like, hey, you're a little bitch while Mikasa cut off his head, but... So he did use his powers? No. Okay, how did he get inside of his head? How did he go into his head? Yeah, how? The original Ymir hold them into their mindscapes, but every person who was from Paradis Island could have gotten sucked into that, regardless of whether or not they were a titan shifter. Okay, but at that time, was he a titan shifter or had received some level of titan shifter powers? Yes, at that point, he was a okay, titan so shifter. Okay, so I don't think he counts at that point. Can I get a ruling? Hmm. He did not use the titan powers Whether to do this. Whether or not someone uses their powers is, is not the question. You know what, Al? I feel like if you would have wanted to argue about Armin's ability to be on this list, it should have been during the vetting process. Well, maybe I should have. I feel bro- like it's the part of the vetting process that should have also been brought up. Well, we're gonna but think it- about maybe pre-powers Armin. Like, what are we talking about yeah. before that? Let's At what go point did he get that the powers? One. Pre-Powers Armin is still the Armin they chose to lead them to save the world. Okay, then we'll we'll consider that. The That's Armin. why he received the powers. Okay, so Okay, that's all you had to say is he gets it post power up or whatever. Yeah, we're not so we're not going to really think about him saving the world. We're going to think about how he led the army, I think is the best okay. way. Okay. Yeah. To that, I think Armin would be very good at at running an army, which is mostly a logistical type position versus actually getting out in the field and having to lead an individual squad is an entirely different skill set, quite frankly. Okay, and again, I would make an argument for, I think, the end of season two, where he is the one who is single-handedly in charge of wrangling Titan Aaron on a rampage. You know what? I think Masato could have easily done that. She's wrangled how many teenagers and giant robots that are constantly going on rampages? I don't think you got a one-up on Masato. Over a radio? What? That is not the same. Wrangling a teenager over a radio who's sitting there being, I don't want to do this, is not the same as sitting on the freaking shoulder of a guy who can turn around and kill you. Well, that's very nice, but I still don't know that at that point in time, I would have looked at Armin and being like, man, that's the guy I want us want to lead. I look at Masato and everything that she's done, and I'm like, yeah, she's got what it takes to handle anything at any point in time. Let's talk about a- Okabe real quick, because I think the Envy's getting off a little <laughs> yeah, easy I right was now. Say, I'm Waiting like, for you to finish I think so like, a word. Um, <laughs> well, I don't know a damn thing about Evangelion, and I was kind of ignoring a little bit of Attack on Titan in case of well, spoilers, hey, That's a but, totally fair thing to uh, get your stuff, but here's the thing about Okabe. He's a fuck-up in a lot of ways, and I think that really needs to be addressed here. His main thing that he does throughout the entire show is screw up. He is not a good leader, and you have people on your list that I've seen who would make much better ones. I, uh, same thing that I've said about Armin. No one's going to respect Okabe as a leader, especially not during a, a crisis situation like this. Everybody on the Future Gadget Laboratory, even if they get on his nerves or not. You mean the group of nerds who have nothing better to do. I mean, I wouldn't consider Myuri a nerd. She's a cosplay otaku, but she's not a nerd. Yes, Same but she's not the... exactly someone that I would bring into the zombie apocalypse either, though. But he has the respect to everybody on the room, and he even eventually gets Mr. Braun to respect him a little bit, who hates him. That's all first. well so, and good, but and you got some people on there who are going to rip him to shreds the moment they get the chance. I disagree. I think he would be able to work around them, because he knows when to... Yeah, obviously he does the Hyo and Kiyoma stick, and there's a reason for that if you haven't seen Steins Gate. It's because it's an all an act to impress Mayuri. But he can be serious when he wants to. He can be resourceful when he needs to be there's and i'm not even talking about main obviously the original series you know he yeah he made some mistakes but spoiler alert for steins gate zero i'm gonna do a spoiler without context 
He does something in Steins Gate Zero that is basically borderline, I don't want to say insane, but it's the sheer will of what he does. He goes back in time basically over a hundred years, but considering that he can only go back 24 hours at a time, he do, do the math. He does that a hundred years or 30 to plus years, 24 hours at a time over and over again, just to complete his mission. If that doesn't show you the resilience and determination of a leader, I don't know what does. I'm not saying that he doesn't have the resolve to do it. I'm saying he doesn't have the skill set. Okabe is definitely probably one of the only characters that may stay sane during a zombie apocalypse. Because Maybe, at this point, but is it is going to be useful as a leader. And again, the number of yes. times that he fucks up on a regular basis, he should be dead 800 times over. But he's not because he has the. I don't know he if it's has, so much he fucks he up. Has it's more time just travel bad luck. to fall back on. Do we have time travel to fall yeah, back on? Yeah, but it's here? mainly bad luck. It ne- he never made any mistakes. It was just bad luck or, you know. Um, Mayuri he? getting shot. Like, he oh, never caused... no, it, like, no, no. The only reason he's alive is because he had plot armor and that CERN wanted to keep him alive. Had they not wanted that, he'd be dead. And guess what? Zombies don't care what you know. They're gonna eat you. He fucks hey, up Yen? once like he always does. He's going down. What, Yin? Are we allowing the time travel thing for this right now? Well, we're assuming what do you he think? can't no, time I... travel. Yeah, if, you, if he can time travel, he can go back to just yeah, stop the zombie like apocalypse. He, the entire argument is moot. He's just normal Okabe without the time travel. All right. I was going to okay, say, I'm like, but... we're not counting the time travel stuff right now because no. that right, might as well count enough, as a fair superpower. Enough, fair enough. I think the point and, is uh, that... I don't know. I don't, I, again, I've never seen Evangelion, so I can't really judge Masato. Oh, but <laughs> between, Oka, between Okabe and Armin, Armin, great strategist, but I think in terms of pure smart, and pure resourcefulness, I think Okabe has not beat. So I think so, he can figure I will out what he needs to I will do. definitely say that Okabe probably has arm and beat on something like charisma and actually making people like you. But, like, you know, I, I, I think that Armin yeah, definitely has so Okabe it, beat on actual logistical thought. But, just, again, just I don't how know how great logistics that envy, are when you're I feel like horde. you might have wanted Okabe as your brains. I wouldn't want Okabe as my brain. No, there's a reason why I have... There's a person I have... Yeah, no, I, I, I do agree Karisu's with your brain's brain before choice. That. Okay, Al, there is a point I want to bring up about Misato. Go she has it. a very deep history with alcoholism, but also depression. I brought that where up. Where she and... feels like she... No, that, 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 that. Shush. Where she feels like she fails, she falls into a non-functioning state. And yet she gets back up every time, do goes and does the shit. With the entire world destroyed, this woman would have the motivation to get back up and keep fighting. Excellent question. I think yes, because one, zombie apocalypse is not her fault, I hope. But beyond that, she knows what her mission is. Get the job done. Get us back to where we were. Honestly, I think zombies are going to be a her? walk in the park compared to the, to what were the angels? Were they aliens? Was it who's ever really said? Who's directing her, though? Who's directing her? Masato She's running the show. Masato, no, it was given, given her position by the higher command at the Japanese army and at Nerve, and they were like, this person knows what they're doing. They're going to run the show. She has one order. Get the job done. And the order is exactly the same whenever zombies show up. She had direct, what would you call that? Like, she had people she reported to who gave her her orders. Yeah, and what were those orders? Stop the angels. Get the kids to do the thing. And she did it. Mm, I th- okay. Are we ready to move on for closing arguments? Sure. Great. <laughs> You're the moderator. <laughs> well, someone start. What's well, cozy? I'm not really sure how to close this out. Uh, honestly. Just like every single paper I've ever written. yeah but that just feels so ew yes and that's exactly the point um maybe do we let al go first to do like an example so you know how nah i I, honestly it's just reiterating your points at at the end of the day armin has dealt with a horde like end of the world situation and he was chosen to be the leader of an army so like 
The proof is literally in the pudding. Okay. And me? I just think that our, that Okabe has the the smarts, the character, the charisma, the intelligence, the pretty much everything you yeah, obviously he's not, you know, a superhero or anything like that. And he's not in a at least initially he's not in a life or death situation when he was born, but I think he has the right fortitude and the right characteristics to be a, a leader to inspire others no matter what. Ow. You're right, we don't got any superheroes here, but the closest that we do come is Misato. She's got the skills that we need, she's got the mentality to keep things moving forward, she has all. She has the charisma and the know-how to make sure that the people working with her and under her know what they're doing and to get the job done, and that's what we need. We need to get the job done. Ah, uh, well, we judges need to do some deliberating. Are we doing that now? Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I just have a question, um, just so I'm clear with Armin, because I didn't see him, like, as a leader. So I know you're mentioning, like, somebody is above Masato. Like, is there anyone above Armin giving him orders, or is he at the top? No, he he becomes the head of the core. Ah. Okay. Okay. Hmm. So, okay. That helps a little bit. Um, it does. Um... I feel like thinking of this in context here also would help. Um, considering the fact that, like, Armin's leading an army, Masato's leading more of a squad. I'm sorry, Envy, but Okabe does not have any combat experience. Yeah. At least from the original Steins Gate, so that's kind of not leaning so much in his favor right now. Okay. Um, CC, you got any words? I agree. I think for me, it's between Masato and Armin. I would agree. Yes. Um, so let's, let's see here. Um, as far as actually dealing with a zombie apocalypse situation here, let's consider, yes, they're both leaders. What do these two people both have that they're bringing to the table i mean if they're bringing just like and we did establish like as far as like their equipment goes that they're bringing in like what they would normally have on them yes that is what we established yeah um so then masato's coming in with what is her standard gear uh usually just a pistol yeah and what's armin coming in with Probably the three D maneuver gear. They like never take that shit off. And except the when they're leading an army, probably. It's a bitch to get on and off. We know yeah, that. Yeah, so. I would imagine. <laughs> Am I the only person uh, in this group who hasn't done that? I mean, oh. I guess, I guess that would be on the judges to rule whether or not that also includes like the actual weaponized part of the three D maneuver gear. I mean, I wouldn't see why you would have the three D maneuver gear without yeah. it. Masato's packing heat. Might as well. Yeah. Yeah. So at that point, what's going to be more effective against zombies? Because they both obviously have like good signs of leadership. Well, one is more for a smaller group of people. One's more for like military logistics and everything else. Hmm. I mean, granted, while pistols can definitely be useful for like shooting them in the head, I would say the 3D maneuver gear is probably a little bit more useful as far as like getting them around and cutting things heads off i guess am i crazy here am i making sense uh, yeah 3d maneuver deer be great to like get away from anything creeping up too close on you but the weapon part of it is a sword right that's yes. sort of close combat pistol you can deal that damage from true. much further away but that really all depends on how, I guess, you're going about attacking them? I mean, zombies, usually you do have to shoot them, I think. So maybe in that respect, Masato might be more useful. You, you don't always have to shoot okay. them. I, I don't want to I mean, win on a technicality here. You can, as long is, as you kill the brain. Okay. Yeah, is killing yeah. the brain. And the thing is with pistols, a headshot isn't always guaranteed to kill them considering you're just damaging parts of the brain and not the entirety of the brain. Yeah. 
I would say so the that I, is range or flank. I would say that I think Cozy made some good points about like Masato's um, struggles that might like bring it down a little bit. And I don't think Al really countered it with anything about Armin's personality that could bring yeah. him down. So I'm thinking maybe Armin does have like a stronger willpower for this sort of thing, at least in the moment. And I, she's made some kind of- He's friends with Aaron. Choices. It doesn't get worse than that. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, from what I remember from the bits of the manga that I did read, he does get better as far as, yeah. like, how he grows into himself and, like, you know, sort of becoming more competent um, as far as, like, leadership goes and, like, his confidence in himself and his, like, ability to, like, outthink the opponents, so. Yeah, I got I mean, that I sense from him overall. Yeah, so... I think I'm decided. I'm going with Armin for this one. Same. Sure. Yeah, so Armin's the winner for the leadership category, and that goes to Cozy. Point to Cozy. Ding, ding. ding. Um, all right. Now that we have the respective leader place that has been chosen, um, we're going to go next to our brawlers and we're gonna start off with envy for this one yes um my brawl excuse me my brawler is joe from the show megalobox and if you haven't heard of megalobox it's a boxing show in a sense it's got it's got elements of raging bull and rocky in it stuff like that so obviously if he was a regular boxer, you know, that's still, you know, good because, you know, how hard boxers hit. Well, he, his standard gear, which he comes equipped with, is a, I don't want to say it's a mech because it's not a mech, but it's got, he's got mechanical arms that it's used in the, in this futuristic world of the show. It's called Megaloboxing and you use, it gives your, uh, it gives you more maneuverability it, and it, more importantly, it makes your punches even stronger so imagine a boxer but twice as powerful so that's why i chose him as my brawler okay I'm and i also want to say too that Ooh. i'm limiting my choices to shows that i've seen so that's why if you can think of somebody better it's because i haven't probably seen the show yet <laughs> i just googled image it because i've never heard of this this feels like um rock'em sock'em robots I honestly was thinking Rock'em Sock'em Robots too. <laughs> he kind of looks like it. Yeah. Anyway, Al? Uh, my choice is Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop. This guy is a tour de force of talent. He's got it all. He's got, uh, he's good with guns, bombs, electrical and mechanical engineering. He's got charisma coming out of his ass. But more importantly <laughs> for this category, he is a master of Jeet Kune Do. Yes, that Jeet Kune Do, the style created by the one and only Bruce Lee. He's very mobile, he's adept at fighting multiple people, and he is always ready for any situation that he, he can adapt to virtually any situation, given the philosophy of his fighting style, be like water. Okay, um, quick question. Uh, that picture you just put up, are all three of those not the same man? <laughs> I know. <laughs> They all do kind of look a yeah. little similar. <laughs> do they all have the same personality? I feel like Mugen and Spike do. Uh, Joe can be a drunk and an asshole like Spike. But... So uh, are we? Are we, in yes. the, are we yeah. still in the opening yeah. argument? Does he go or... with your brawler? Yeah. Last one. Sorry, good. No, I'm purely just inquiring about his personality right now. I'm sure we'll find out about it. Then your turn. Argument. Okay, I chose Mugen from Samurai Champloo as the brawler. So, uh, he is a very unorthodox samurai because he grew up fighting dirty in the streets, and he was never afraid to incorporate that into his fighting style. So, a fight with Mugen is never really about the sword and more whether or not he's about to kick you in the face or balls. Okay. And debate. So. I'ma just, I'ma just say, I think robot arms kind of beats this all out. 
I disagree <laughs> entirely because as much as Envy was talking about those robot arms, correct me if I'm wrong, Envy, this guy's name is Gearless Joe because one of his things is fighting without that gear. In the sequel, he fights with gear. Oh, in hmm. the sequel, I see. Okay. So all the scars on his body, can you tell me a little bit about that? Because from my understanding, it's because he takes a lot of risks in fights that get him hurt a lot. And uh, if you're up close and impersonal with a zombie, taking a hit is really not going to be any good at all. Spoiler for anybody who hasn't seen Megalobox. Yeah, he was in a uh, underground fixed fighting ring, so he was forced to lose mm -hmm. often because he was uh, and he was an, under a shady mobster basically when he actually so, does fight he so that wasn't speaking to his talent he was yes. forced to throw in the his show matches. when actually he does mm. fight legitly and yes he does fight without his gear throughout the entirety of the first season against people that have the gear and guess what he wins every single fight but is every still... single fight a cake is every single fight a cakewalk? No. But, but he still he's... takes a lot of damage. I looked up some stuff about him. His style is the boxer puncher style, which is a combination of the outbox slugger and uh, I forget what the first, what was the first one. Well, uh, if you want to talk about styles, taking damage, how often does Spike get his ass handed to him and he has to be nursed back to health by Jet? Usually when it's when he's shot or blown up, yes. But in a hand-to-hand -hand fight, he kicks the majority of people's asses other than maybe Vincent in the movie version. His style is to not get hit, and that's what you want in a zombie apocalypse. The only time he gets hit is when he's got an opponent who is going to be a lot stronger than a zombie. Same thing with Joe, too. Or let's he, say a lot he, faster. He, his opponents that he fights in the up. show, even without the mecha, they're usually bigger than him. Like, if he, he he'd be like a middleweight if this is real-life boxing. He sometimes fights opponents that would easily be heavyweight. So you got a middleweight going up against a heavyweight, and he still ends up winning. So, I, 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 yes, obviously Spike, you know, has the martial arts, and yes, I agree that that Bruce Lee style is cool and would be very useful. But if you're talking about a hand-to-hand -hand brawl, I think Joe has better brawl ability. Yes, that's a word. I'm making it up, and I think he has more stamina than. And I think I'm, he, I probably and he has more stamina. Okay, so I'm going off of that, Envy. I'm actually going to argue. I don't think martial arts in a zombie apocalypse is a very efficient way of fighting because martial arts is only meant to go up against other martial arts. I hear what you're saying, but at the same time, the main thing that he's bringing to this with his martial arts is his mobility and adaptability to any situation that he needs to adapt to. When you look at someone like Joe, or quite frankly, even Mugen at times, they stick to a singular style and don't adapt to the situation. You don't know what's going to be happening in the apocalypse. We know zombies, but there's going to be a lot of other things coming your way. And Spike is ready for any single one of those and able to adapt his style, his moves, his mindset, everything to the situation. It's just like Bruce Lee said, be like water. If the water is put in a teapot, it becomes the teapot. If it's put in a cup, it becomes the cup. It can flow and it can crash. Spike flows and he crashes and he, well, that so. sounded a little bit wrong, but you <laughs> know exactly what I'm, not, I'm saying with that. I'm not arguing for Mugen because I don't think he actually was stand up necessarily to Envy's. I'm well, just, they're not fighting each other. Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, it was more about aesthetics. Oh, he was a martial my artist. goodness. You gotta he be was kidding a You think artist, it was about but aesthetic? He was an actor, you are talking out foremost. your ass right now. Let me tell you something. Bruce Lee was not aesthetic. He had this, he had, yes, he had style. Yes, he had flair. But he had the substance to back up that sizzle. Don't you be talking trash on Bruce Lee. It was about aesthetics. In the movies, Over yes, but he was beyond that. in combat. Oh my ass, you have no idea what you're talking about right now. The real problem with Mugen more than anything else is his attitude towards everything. He doesn't play well with others, so being on a team is going to be terrible for him. Hey, hey, and beyond hey, hey, that, hey. he takes hey. risks that he really Ow. does not Ow. need to be. Ow. Yep. Stop. Cozy's not arguing not. for Mugen. So wait, <laughs> so wait, just so I'm clear, Cozy, are you forfeiting this fight? Yeah, I'm more arguing, I think Joe is the better choice here. Because again, robot arms. 
I don't think you can beat out robot yeah, arms. Yeah, robot arms when he has them. Spike doesn't need that stuff. He's ready so to go in Joe. any he doesn't situation. Need, yeah, obviously, uh, Joe Beyond can, that, can I again. be a capable fighter <sighs> and brawler without this robot arms, too. Sure. Can, I just, can I just say something? Go for it. R real quick. What kind of fucking dumb position for a team is this in a zombie apocalypse? Thank I mean, you. if you want to get into that, Spike also brings a whole lot of other skills that go beyond it. I honestly could have put Spike in any position on this team, and he would have excelled. Maybe not in the brains department or something, or the medic. Well, actually, even the medic. He comes with medicine, he comes with survival skills, he comes with gun That's skills, he comes, with, explosive, he comes with everything. That is not what I'm that. saying here. I am not arguing with you about your choice. Okay, I'm here. Everybody's trying Guys, to I'm here with two people. Chibi, go. <laughs> I am... What I am trying to say here is this was a dumb choice for position for a team. I'm not arguing with anything that you guys are well, this saying is the for position. your arguments, but I'm just saying that this was a dumb choice to put in a zombie going, apocalypse. Meal. Going off of that, Chibi, who would you rather have fighting hand to hand against the zombies? The little flesh human who regularly gets himself hurt? Or I'm the sorry, guy with they are both flesh humans, and I watched hit. some fights with uh, Joe. He got his ass kicked a number of times. Yes, he won in the end, but he went down hard a number of times. And he already said he had to throw his fights. No, no, Hold I'm up. talking How in much? his legitimate fights. The first one against Shark, he nearly gets knocked out. I'm gonna in like first round. cut in. I don't know if like I would agree that Cozy should be fighting for Envy's person. I think Envy needs to fight for Envy's person. Cozy yeah. needs to fight yeah. for Cozy's. Shut up. What? <laughs> no, Are you not telling you. the judge to shut don't up. That's cozy. not gonna end well for you. <laughs> That's the judge telling the judge up. to shut up, but I don't think that judge is oh, telling the judge all to right. shut up. I need to no, hear the other CC judges. told me. CC told me to shut up, but I also don't feel like. In an open format debate, you can tell one of the contestants that they're not allowed to debate. That's Except dumb. Except you right. forfeit It's not it. your person, You though. forfeit the fight, though. Even if it's not my person, I should be able to point out the fallacies in other people's. It's oh, yeah, you can point debate. out you can point out Al's fallacies, but I just wasn't sure why you're defending somebody else's <laughs> Yeah, Envy, where are you at yeah. in all this? What is this, Ace Attorney? You <laughs> can't just you gonna let Cozy sides. fight for you? I, I mean... The way I see it is this category is based on brawling. Yes, Spike has a gun. Joe never uses a gun. My, uh, Spike has, you know, other skills. But if you're talking pure brawling ability, even with uh, Spike's mastery of the martial arts, I think Joe's the better brawler. And I think uh, Joe has the ability to adapt. Yes, he did get his butt kicked a bunch of times, but he still adapted in each of the fights and also keep in mind too, we're fight depending on what kind of zombies they are. If, if they're the slow zombies or the fast zombies, if they're the slow zombies, then I don't think Joe should have any problem dealing with them quickly. I think I, I think the again, Joe's problem is going to be the fact that he's only used to ever fighting one opponent. We're talking about a horde here, and Spike on multiple occasions has fought multiple people simultaneously and come out on top. Joe's also from the streets, so I'm sure growing up he dealt with his fair well, share. They of both bar. came from the streets. They, yeah. Can I hear more about these robot arms? Do they go over the arms? Are they longer than I think the they human go over arms? the arms, don't they? I'm assuming since he can fight without them, they are not like part of him. There is a character yeah. in the show that has his arms surgically put onto him, but that's an extreme case. In most parts, it's something you can remove and unmove. Like a is sleeve like or something, right? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Yeah. How much of the arm does it cover? Um, basically like the outside of the arm. So it's basically uh, Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Uh, Chibi had a good comparison. That's basically what they are. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, what's Spike bringing to the table? I mean, beyond we're what we're talking I've... from purely a brawling perspective here, I think. Yeah. He's able to move quickly on his feet. He's got acrobatics. He's got very strong punches, kicks, He's able to basically use any part of his body as a weapon as he needs to and move and get away from his opponent as quickly as possible. Also a really good improviser with whatever's around him. He's used brooms. He's used a coffee maker. He's used, I mean, go look at Bebop. The guy has used everything to fight people. I know he's way more Bruce Lee, but at uh, certain moments he gets that Jackie Chan moves. Okay. 
Cozy, I know you are forfeiting this match, but I would have wanted to see what uh, Mugen would have been bringing to the table here. So Mugen is very much like Spike, but he's with a sword. Okay. But also he does rely a lot on fighting dirty, which wouldn't really be effective with zombies. Hmm. Okay. Ain't no breaking the rules when there's no rules. All right, closing arguments. Oh, I thought those were the closing arguments. Were they? Yeah, I feel I feel like that can cover closing arguments. I think we could count arguments. that. I mean, we both okay. seem to. You know. That's what I thought Sounds we were great, doing. Sorry. Because I I'm kind of done with this topic. Because again, <laughs> That's fair. This is a fucking dumb category. Agreed. Who wants to get in close quarters combat with a zombie? Look at these guys. These are apparently, highly contagious diseased creatures. We should not. Be dealing with hand-to-hand -hand melee. Yeah. Exactly. This is a bad category. Anyway, I, I'm gonna get off my soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> I do think Rosie brought up a good point about having the metal arms. If a zombie can't get your teeth around those, their teeth around those. It's very true. Now, question: Are those arms made of steel? Some kind of metal. I. I. I think it's basically the more expensive they are, the better the uh, materials are made of. How malleable are they? Uh, Can they crumble I'm... easily? No. I mean, correct me okay. if I'm wrong, Joes are basically kind of like just a wireframe. Yeah, he's poor, so he got, you know, the short end of the stick when it comes to the arms. If he, let's just say, hypothetically, he goes out and gets the best kind... Those things aren't breaking for a while. So we're going based off what he would be bringing, which is the wire frame then? Kind of, sort of, yeah. Can we get an actual picture of what that looks like? Yeah. Um. I think for me, like considering all three of them and considering what I think of as a brawler, I think the joe makes the most sense to me because i'm hearing like martial arts and dodging and stuff from the other ones but when i think of a brawler i think of who can hit the hardest so i do kind of lean towards joe right now because i think he'd probably hit the hardest of the three and yin is like i think of a bar brawl man <laughs> yeah <laughs> kind of uh, i don't know if that's wrong <laughs> My whole thing is, is like, fair, I can't... All three of these guys would easily get into a bar brawl. <laughs> I know, but, like, who could really, like, punch the head off a zombie, you know? Here's the thing with me as far as, like, this brawling category is concerned. Like, yes, I do think, like, being able to throw really hard punches is, like, a good thing. But at the same time, like, you're going to want to make sure that you can crush a zombie's head, basically incapacitating them at this point. So, my whole thing is, is that, while we're bringing up the points that, like, Joe, as far as pure brawling is concerned, is definitely, like, the one to go with. I'm also kind of thinking that, like, if you're going to be in a fight, um, I'm also definitely sort of leaning a little bit, like, thinking more towards Spike Spiegel as well, because... Al did bring up a good point that, like, being able to, you know, like, think on your feet and using other weaponry can definitely be helpful because, who knows, you grab a pipe, you spear it mm. through a zombie's eye socket, and you take out its brain. Like, mm -hmm. I don't Chibi's know. I feel like and hard about that one particular scenario, I think. <laughs> who, me? Yeah. <laughs> no, it was, it's just something that I thought of. It was like, yeah, no, grabbing other weapons is definitely good, like, because if you're going to be in a brawl... You gotta be able to, like, make sure that you're able to at least do some sort of fighting, even if he's not, like, mostly doing fisticuffs. Um, but I don't know. Are we... Um, I guess so my, my other thing thought is, is about... like, are we purely going by fisticuffs or just pure, you know, like, brawling? I, I think, think it's both. that would depend on, like, what the we would define brawling as. Yeah. yeah it's well, if we're, if you guys are saying barroom brawl, like that's anything goes at that point. Pick up a bottle. Yeah. Mm. And so my other thought about Joe's, like, with the armor or the arms, um, that might give him harder punches and like a bit of protection. But he could mm. probably also only hit what's more or less directly in front of him. 
Yeah, that's true. And that Mm -hmm. won't help much if he's surrounded. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. (laughs) Bro, the arm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm up on this light year. Right, but it's like, can he, it sounds like he doesn't always fight with them, so he can take them on and off, right, Envy? Yes. Okay. But but that even gets me, again, this, (laughs) (laughs) this is a bad category. We know, I hate this category, it's fair, it's a fair point. This this is just this just has OSHA like guidelines like <laughs> big red tape all over it like no OSHA fucking OSHA yeah it's it's hard to say with this one I mean they all clearly can fight but I don't know yeah. okay all a brawl is is to fight or quarrel in a noisy way a oh. noisy it has noisiest. to be noisy <laughs> well Mugen but he left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Mugen's out there like shit. Fuck uh, you, bitch. <laughs> okay, so who's the loud okay. one out of Spike and uh, Joe? Um, <laughs> who'd be making the most noise? Spike is a very quiet man. I don't know about Joe. Yeah, so it was Joe. He only. <laughs> Oh my god. <laughs> They're oh both no. the strong silent type. <laughs> <laughs> They're both bad brawlers. Okay, I think I'm gonna have to vote Spike on this one. Hmm. Yeah. So I think I'd have to go Spike on this one as well. I guess it's just that I don't really know a whole lot more about Joe and whether or not like outside of like a more like a traditional boxing sort of like setting just like how mm, like I guess like how much fighting experience he would have at that point not to say that he wouldn't but I don't know I feel like there's just like a specific kind of setting for that sort of thing whereas like with with Spike in like kind of the sort of fighting that uh I'll be describing that seems more like something that you would actually kind of um deal with I, I don't know. I guess if you were going up against a mob, but I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I was going to pick Joe, but I'm outvoted anyway, so it's fine. Okay, I will also just say it doesn't really matter who wins this, because regardless, if they're mobbed on, they're dead. Yeah. Not Spike. He's used to it. <laughs> Honestly, Mugen could probably do well with that. I, I want to say this. I want to see all three of them fight each other. I yeah. think that'd be amazing. But. Yeah. Oh, the other thing about Mook, he throws break dancing into his fighting style sometimes. Yep. Well, that's fun. Mix it up a little. This is certainly cannot... the category with the best voice actors. I cannot believe this. We've only gotten through two categories. Well, we gotta it's hurry it up a little bit. Night. Let's move on. It's What's been next? An hour. Okay, moving right, on. Next category. Weapons expert. Al, go. Okay, so weapons expert. You need someone who knows every weapon known to man, and that is Sosuke Sagara from Full Metal Panic. Let me tell you about this guy's resume at the age of 16. He was trained by the KGB as an assassin to kill a uh, guerrilla uh, resistance leader in Afghanistan. He was then adopted by that Afghanistani uh, resistance leader and taught the ways of fighting in the mountains and guerrilla warfare and whatnot. And this is all before the age of 10. He's already mastered all of this stuff. He's mastered virtually every weapon on the planet at this point, including guns, knives, explosives, bazookas. He can pilot a giant robot. He's not coming in with a giant robot, but he can do it. And by the age of 16, he has now joined a Japanese high school where he is the bodyguard for a psychic girl. It's a little complicated, but, like, it's... He can do anything, and especially anything to do with a weapon. L, not... We literally have the same character, but I think we basically have the same character. We do. We do have the same character. Go ahead. You put two pictures up of the same guy again. I don't know about the (laughs) third guy behind that mask, but... Okay, I have anime face blindness... I can't do this. So it's okay. Uh, Goblin Slayer is like Master Chief. We haven't seen his face yet. Cozy. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Yes. yes. Okay. Well, I did uh, Setsuna from Gundam Double Zero, and like Sosuke, uh, 
He was a child soldier whose home was absolutely fucking obliterated, so he became involved in guerrilla warfare. Um, really dirty, dirty guerrilla warfare. Obviously, they're using child soldiers. I mean, like, around the age of 10. And from there, he uh, goes on to pilot a giant <laughs> mecca and a guerrilla terrorist organization aiming to revolutionize the world. So they are the same person. Oh my god. Okay. And besides, a couple key details. Besides but yeah. the school. <laughs> what, what uh, my, mine's two? from a partial comedy, so. <laughs> I'll be going to be completely honest. I'm kind of like cozy from the last round. I know my character doesn't have a shot in hell, especially after hearing Al's description of that character's backstory. I was kind of fucked with this category <laughs> because all the people I would have picked come from shows with supernatural stuff or stuff like that, so... I'll just introduce my character and then I'll just forfeit because I know I don't have a shot. Um, Goblin Slayer is in a fantasy world. He had a traumatic past where his family his family died from goblins. So he pretty much has dedicated his entire life to doing nothing but killing goblins. And the reason why I picked him is because he's... Um, not only is he, a, is he a master swordsman, he's able to fight in any condition to fight zo- to fight goblins. Uh, have a bunch of goblins in a wide open arena he can fight them that way fight them in close quarters combat that's his specialty he fights in caves and he is and that is and that's the reason why i picked him is because okay if you're in a tramp if you're in a cramped space with zombies well he'd be able to be able to fight his way out of that but again uh i'll let uh cozy and al debate their twins so uh yeah have fun with that <laughs> um so honestly honestly i don't feel like this is much of a debate um because actually um, i do actually like al's choice better than mine (laughs) um so setsuna (laughs) has weapons expertise in all of these areas and arguably more areas than sosuke because this is set in the future with like alien technology and stuff as well but we see a majority of his expertise mainly in the Gundam suit, which we ah. had priorly agreed isn't in this fight. With Sosuke, we see his practical application of weapons, like, in every episode. Okay. I'm sorry. I argued for you, Al. Did, did everybody? Did everybody forfeit? I guess no, so. No, no, I'm not. I'm not forfeiting. Oh, okay. Because I was about to be like, like I, I, I came up with arguments better. for this. <laughs> okay, I yeah. I like your choice better. Like Setsuna technically knows more weapons, but can he but hide so eight times? Use more weapons. <laughs> can he hide eight times his own body weight in explosive ordnance on his person somehow? Which yes, he did in an episode. It was just he yes, came he home from school and he unloaded a pile of bazookas and c4 where he had it no one knows everyone was commenting where did you have those we don't understand because so, he had already taken some weapons off of him he at that is, point. he is a walking armory always ready to go but beyond that yeah these these two characters are extremely similar so i feel like to some degree and cozy you're gonna have to let me know about this as well i think the one element where they might be able to differ is I think that Sosuke can work on a team a little bit better. He, if I, correct me if I'm wrong, um, your guy, Setsuna, he's got a bit of a so, zealotous no. mentality to him. No, you would actually be wrong there. Really? Um. So Setsuna, because he was indoctrinated so young into following orders... Mm-hmm. Whatever his commander tells him to do, whoever they tell him to work with team-wise, he does it. Even if he doesn't personally get along with them, as long as he's ordered to cooperate with them, he can do it. And he is very efficient about accommodating them and their style into his own. Even if they're people who he might believe are causing the world to be unjust and terrible? Yes, he regularly gets into fights with one of his teammates. So see, that, and given who else I know is on your team, feels like he's going to be fighting with some people on his team. 
Sosuke doesn't have that many hangups as far as who he's working with. And I didn't load my team with bad about? people. Uh, I mean, Setsuna can't talk. Like, he's a... What basically boils down to, I think... Wait, did you say he can't they're talk? They're religious extremists. I'm sorry, is he no, mute? Not, did you not, say... I, you're breaking up a little bit, sorry. So, it's, it's not that he stands against evil and injustice. Remember... He's part of a terrorist organization, and that is how it's described throughout the entire show. Mm -hmm. He's regularly portrayed as kind of like a religious extremist, except it's not about a religion. It's just an ideology. An ideological extremist. Which is that humans need to prove themselves worthy to advance to the next frontier which is basically actual contact with aliens. I really, that makes it sound like he does not want to help the zombie apocalypse and he's going to be like everyone fend for themselves a little bit. I don't know that Sosuke would be like that. He, if, if you'd like to know a little bit more about his background, he's part of a counter-terrorist organization. So, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Depending on how you want to look at it. You're done... the bad guy, I'm the good guy. I don't know. <laughs> The the organization has done bad things. Yeah, it has. Everyone's everyone's done bad things. Uh, no, 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 no. Like Setsuna's organization has oh, done bad okay. things. Oh, okay. So, um, they do try to market it in the light of, again, like they're doing this for the future of humanity, and you know you have to root out the corruption. But it's very much a um. There's a word for this that I cannot remember. They're saying they're rooting out the corruption, but at their very core, or as an organization, they're a little corrupt because they're they're playing God in a sense. Cool. So your Goblin guy, Goblin Slayer. Like, I thought he forfeited. Andy, what are your arguments for Goblin Slayer? Yeah, yeah I, I thought forfeit. he forfeited. <laughs> there's no way Do I can you forfeit. There's no way I can compete with. <laughs> Oh, I'm liking Goblin I mean, Slayer. It's as simple as one. Up. Oh, you're making me sad. CC has already made their choice. Okay. Yeah, he's got a sword. We, we've got literal bags of holding full of bazookas. <laughs> I mean, I don't know that if he was going to have much of a leg to stand on. <laughs> hmm. All right. Are those your closing arguments then? Uh, I mean, my closing arguments would just be, yeah, he has like every skill that you would want from someone in a zombie apocalypse situation. Survival, weapons, hand and combat, the the proper mentality to just go through this and he doesn't he doesn't blink when shit goes down. At one point, him and his team captured an enemy spy in the middle of Italy. He hotwired a fiat that had zero trunk space, but somehow managed to keep a whole armory in the back of that thing. We're being chased down by m the mafia with a bunch of machine guns uh, and a giant mech suit, all whilst he's on the phone with his not-yet-girlfriend in Japan who's berating him about uh, that he didn't study for his Japanese literature test, and he doesn't dr drop a bead of sweat. Hmm. Okay. Those are okay. my, my closing arguments. Cozy. Okay, so again, um, I can make a lot of the same arguments that Elle just did, minus I'm the I'm sorry, specifically fiat the fiat? <laughs> <laughs> minus the fiat thing. But again, uh, Setsuna has all of like the real-world weapons expertise that we could think of now, but also expertise in weapons that go beyond our understanding and are alien in nature. So he is very adaptable and can learn any type of weapon. Okay. Okay, I just cool. want to say this before deliberation. Yes. Combination zombie alien apocalypse would be a really cool setting for something. That's all I want to say. <laughs> That's great. All right. Um, so, judges. What all are right, we thinking? I'm I'm not going to lie to you. Envy said I forfeit. Cozy said I like Al's choice. I was like, great. It sounds like you're going to foul. And then I tuned out. <laughs> wow. I was wondering why I you were I seriously thought that was anything. how it was going early on. <laughs> All right. So, like, uh, it makes a lot more I sense. Just, like, so, like, I chose Satsuna, but, like, I think in, like, the practicality of, like, our real-world knowledge that we have now, like, 
yes, it would be so scary. I mean, <laughs> honestly, you can make an argument that the comedic power to like infinistore things wouldn't be real, <laughs> but <laughs> true. I don't have yeah. to count. That I also if you guys just don't really want, love but... Full Metal Panic. It's it's really good. I really like that show. Fiat of holding sounds like a great thing. I don't know. Not a fiat of holding, just infinite storage in his Well, pockets. it was a fiat yeah. of holding, but he also has, <laughs> like, an a infinite asshole of holding. I don't know. <laughs> the majority of them come out of his pants. I'm just saying. Oh. Hmm. I mean, it's it normal. It's just, just a pistol. Like, he'll but... pull it out of his pocket. Yep. I don't know how you he'll fit an like... AK-47 in your pocket, but you did it. <laughs> He's like, I'm not happy to see you. That's my rocket launcher. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I don't know. I don't know either of these. So to me, these <sighs> are the same man. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. You're either going to love it or you're going to hate it. I don't know. It's the same man. <laughs> you got to pick something. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, GP? <laughs> oh, my God. Ugh. So... Um, I guess I'm just trying to, like, think here. I am totally sorry, Al. You're going to be hearing a lot of noise right now because my cat's been driving me crazy for, like, the past 15 minutes. It's all right. <sighs> all right. So, I guess... I mean, the one who sounds like he's part of a counter-terrorist organization sounds a bit more helpful. I don't know. It's fair. I think we're going with that one. <laughs> yeah, no, no, that's fair, that's fair. You hold up a picture of Setsuo and a picture of Sosuke, and it's like, they have the same picture. Alright, so, at this point then, we are moving on to Speed Fighter. Actually, I think we're, it's, um, it's Brains next, isn't it? No, uh, you have Speed Fighter here on the roster. I, I got... Brains that's, on the that's actual the list, we gotta not go. not the template. So yeah, brains is next on the template. Yeah. All right, then that's the one we're going with. Someone start. Who's okay. the zombie hungry for? Okay, so I chose L from Death Note for my brains. Okay. And I really feel like that is pretty self-explanatory in that he is like the greatest detective in the world at his point in time. I don't remember who it was that was like throwing trash on his successors the other day, but they're weird. It, it was we don't me. need to talk uh, about his successors. I'm sure it was Yin, but it, they're weird. <laughs> so he, they're he's not the relevant. greatest detective <laughs> of his time, which is why I chose him. For me, I am choosing Senku, the main character from Dr. Stone. Um, you want to talk about somebody who would be great in a zombie apocalypse? Uh, this guy. He wakes up from his own apocalypse, and he basically creates the tools, machinery, science, you name it, from basically the primitive stuff. Like, he basically goes... Through human history and human development with tools from the Stone Age to the early Industrial Revolution with, again, no other science other than the science in his head. He And he's also the leader of the village, so he's got brains and leadership skills. So he'd be able to craft some really good shit in the zombie apocalypse. I chose Zoe Hanji from Attack on Titan, the Survey Corps' lead science person. I forget the particular title they give them. The translations for the subtitles and the dub is always a little bit uh, different every single time. Doesn't really matter, though. They are a scientist, pure and simple, and they are also very familiar with apocalyptic situations that include horde-like creatures. I think just, that was my opening statements, but I think we should say that beforehand, whenever we're bringing up Attack on Titan, we did say Attack on Titan was cool because the overall threat is more kaiju-like than zombie, despite the fact that they share a number of characteristics with zombies. So, yeah. uh, quick Hanji question is also before gender we proceed. neutral, and that kind of scores mm -hmm. you points with both the two of your judges. What gender? Hanji's uh, non-binary. Ah, uh, yes. There is that. Oh wait, what did I say? No, you said they, but like that scores you points with two of the three judges. 
Uh, that's true. I mean, some. I feel like someone asked them about their gender once, and, and they're like, are you a man or a woman? And they're like, I'm a scientist. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, before we move on, I just have a question. Envy, uh, clarify this for me. Does Senku have any sort of powers or abilities, please? No, he's just no. insanely smart. He's like, smart. Just, he's just really fucking smart. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. He's right, got, just, yeah, he's a normal human. Just... Just wanted to double check and make sure because for whatever reason I was sort of under the impression that there was some weird supernatural stuff going on with Dr. Stone, but the, that might have just been from the trailers. Well, to, um, to clarify, so, the setup for Dr. Stone is that the world one day just gets petrified and everybody turns to stone and then like 3,000 years in the future, he wakes up because he gets unpetrified. I'm not going to explain why and... That's when he starts creating his new world, basically. Yeah, if he had magic powers, I would have called on that. Yeah. Wasn't he unpetrified for, like, hundreds of years before everybody else? No, he on? basically kept his consciousness the entire time for over 3,000 oh, years. Oh, that was, yeah. Yeah, he, uh... Oh, God, so he's that would be still conscious hell. throughout yeah. it, yeah. He literally right. counted down the seconds so... and minutes for three over 3,000 years to see how much time passed. Yeah, I knew it was something like that, you're right. I'm gonna be real. I feel like he's borderline insane at this point. Little. I'm just gonna say that. I mean, and I mean, uh, that, yeah, if that so, picture is anything to go by, I would say yes. <laughs> yeah. So, he has uh, lettuce hair. <laughs> um. Yeah. L, talking thing. about not completely sane, I am. Though I love Hanji, going to bring up their biggest character flaw, which is that they would try to keep the zombies as pets. No, they that would try to keep the zombies as. They would try to keep the zombies as experiment fodder, which, if you're gonna be no, in a zombie no, no, apocalypse, no, no, no. you want to find they a way to effectively Titans kill them. Or fix it. Pets. And they had cried real tears when they had to put them down. Well, you hate to lose resources, but you know what? Isn't this good to have empathy? That way, when you find a survivor, you're gonna be able to help this person out. I think that's a very, very important aspect to have about yourself. You know what else is a very important you know resource? What? Keeping I'm going to defend my character for Shaun once. Um, Good. Um, <laughs> uh, again, in a zombie apocalypse, like, I'm just going to name this just because it's the show I've seen the most, but, like, picture you're in The Walking Dead. There's hardly any resources left. I'd really rather not. Well, okay. I don't like that show very much. Oh, okay, well, okay, just, just in general, <laughs> you're in the... Ignore me. You're in a zombie apocalypse, and... You're low on resources. You're low on everything. You need a guy that can help you find the resources that you need and build the tools that you need. Senku does that in strides. He he has made... He basically made a village go from a primitive village to a village that has working electricity, working power generators. He even made a freaking boombox. Is it practical in a zombie apocalypse? No, but he has the brains and the capabilities to make a freaking boombox in the zombie apocalypse. So, he has made so much. He yeah. made. He learned how to make freeze dried ramen so that way it could be stored for the winter. He made all kinds of different stuff that. So it, it, basically, and he's also good at making tools and traps. So zombies come by, he can trap them. He can make spears. I, he can. He made gunpowder. He made all kinds of shit. So he. He, like yes, obviously L would be L and Z L is very brainy in terms of deductions, and Hanji is very good in scientific experimentation. But I so is uh, would argue that Hanji is coming in with roughly that same level of skill set. They have a large understanding of mechanics and a number of other things that would be very essential to them going into the zombie apocalypse. But beyond Doctor Stone, is he Doctor Stone or is it just Senku? He's just. I'm it, just going to say yeah, Senku. Senku. Beyond yeah. beyond what Senku can contribute with that, Hanji also brings to the table stellar physical abilities with the 3D gear, which I believe we said was in play. And okay, I, yeah, I mean, you don't I join the Survey like, Corps without knowing how to kill something. Give Senku yeah, enough. But I give feel Senku like enough this, time, and he'll find something to counter. We're just supposed to be it. arguing about brain power. Like, I don't think we should be arguing their physical capability right now. Well, I have to throw it out there. If you're going to be surviving I, I a zombie think apocalypse, you, can you, have argue able, here? you have to be able to survive a zombie apocalypse. I think yeah. what you can, what can argue Senku here bench? is that Hanji <laughs> has, like, battle knowledge. 
Yes, they definitely have battle knowledge. They, that with, they could with, uh, apply. What's his face for how long? They know what they're doing. As far as L goes, Envy. though, not a whole lot that's going to be useful in the zombie apocalypse. Yeah, you got deduction and whatnot, but like, what can you deduce of a zombie? There's no L out thinking a zombie. They don't think. Like, L coordinates like police raids. Well, that sounds like he should be in a leader position then. He found a supernatural killer. Cool. You don't really have to deduce where a supernatural killer is. It's right there. It's the zombies walking towards you. What do you do now, smart guy? Well, in that case, he would be able to analyze all outlets of the situation and be able to determine the best course of action. As could Hanji with their stellar abilities so, that they honed through their years in the Survey Corps. Envy, that, that's the question I want to pose to you. Um, is there any, like, battle experience, like, strategic experience Senku could fall back on? Yes, there is an arc that he basically... Like when he again, very very long story short, he uh, he has to fight a kingdom, a, a rival kingdom that's basically s the strongest people that got re, re revived in the world. Like this man is Goliath on steroids. He and he outsmart goes up and he outsmarted them. So if you get a horde of zombies and you get a big super uber zombie. He would be able to find a way to outsmart them and out trick them using deduction, brains, traps, tricks, resources, anything in the environment. Basically, Senku could, and he's also good at adapting on the fly. He can make stuff basically out of thin air. He basically made a paper airplane that became a uh, nitroglycerin fused bomb that took out, that won the war in that fight. So he's. More than capable of handling a bunch of mindless zombies. Hey, you know who's really good at it being adaptable and uh, thinking on their feet? Someone who, who's a master of 3D gear like Hanji. I, I, like I said, give him enough time. Too literal. And Senku I'm, I'm, would, uh, would find I'm a not. way to counter. Hanji don't need no time. Hanji's ready to go. I'm not going to lay off the fact that Hanji would attempt to keep them as pets. Yes, Hanji they kept some titans as pets, smart, but did they let those titans eat anyone? They, they did not. Hanji understands the situation that they're in and knows the safety protocols needed to keep a dangerous no. pet. Hanji literally has posed danger and risks to their own, like, units and in the yet, name of science. Still danger and risk there. to my sanity here. Beating this dead horse that we're still talking about. Let's hey, move you, on. You're the moderator. Yeah, listen, you can call it. Listen, keeping it's kind of hard to do that when you're worked. both very loud. We are loud. Keeping zombies as pets worked in Shaun of the Dead. It's fine. True. That's certainly true. I mean, I would not recommend it, but there was one lady on TV who apparently was still having relations with her husband. <laughs> Closing right, statements. So Closing statements. Closing arguments. Yes. Um... I think you would ultimately want L as, like, your brains behind any operation just because he can look at something for literally, like, a point of a second and analyze the best case scenario and get the outcome he wants beyond, you know, being supernaturally killed by an outside force. I just think that Senku has the, re has the not only, I, I personally think he's the most intelligent out of the three as someone who's seen all three shows, I think. He, in terms of pure intelligence, I think he has Hanji beat, and I think he is more than capable of going into any environment and literally creating, well, not magic, but the, the expression, creating magic out of nothing. So I think that's what would give him the advantage. High intelligence is great, but you know what's really great? Practical intelligence. Understanding not only the situation that you're in, but actually being able to do something about it yourself. They have the mechanical engineering that they need to deal with any situation that they have brought up. They have the physical ability to take on a zombie if they need to. And they have the f the mental fortitude and the foresight to capture a zombie and study it as necessary. Hanji all the way. All right. Judges... I think this is the first round where I actually am very familiar with all three. Um, okay. <laughs> and I don't know. I kind of am leaning towards Sun Q because I do think he technically has the highest intelligence. Like, if we're talking about brains of the three of them and the, probably the most um, 
applicable intelligence since he is resourceful and can make like anything basically so i'm kind of leaning towards him but i'm wondering what you guys think Cece, uh yeah i'm in for scallion hair yum when what sold me was envy said he created a boom box i'm like oh that could be really helpful for distracting zombies depending on what kind of zombies we're dealing with and I think it's good that we did not define the rules of the zombies, because you don't get to know beforehand when the zombies attack what kind of zombies you will be dealing with. Okay. So, going just based off of these three people that we have here, deductive reasoning is always great to have, but I don't know, I don't really feel like that's going to be too helpful in this situation here. So, sorry, Cozy, I'm not really feeling it for Al right now. Um, As far as Senku and uh, Hanji, um, I do feel like Hanji, given, like, the... Hanji reminds me kind of like the doctor who's, like, trying to find a cure in this sort of situation. Um, but in that case, especially with, like, the zombies, that just puts Hanji more into danger. Um, whereas Senku, I feel like, is resourceful and not necessarily reverse engineer, um, the objects that will make life easier for the people in the future after... Apparently everyone's done being petrified. I haven't seen Dr. Stone. I also don't care to see it. But I feel like that would be a bit more useful in putting his brain to work than that way. So I'll probably also go with Dr. Stone as well. Point for Envy. Yeah, it was an uphill battle. (laughs) I will also say, I feel like Envy, you could have made a good argument for Senku is the medic. No, um, yeah, when, when you see my medic, you'll know why. He's already cured. I, you know what? I was going to say he could have been the leader probably over Okabe. Well, I'm just, if he's already cured an epidemic, like. Well, oh. moving on. Speed fighter. Moving on. Moving on. Medic? Oh, is it, speed, is it medic or speed fighter? It's medic. Oh. Uh, am I up first? Yes. Okay. Um, my character is literally named Doctor. It's a show from Akadama Drive. It's one of those shows where they don't have real character names. They just, their trait or their profession is what they're called. So you had a character in the show named Brawler, which I could have put for Brawler, but <laughs> the reason why I chose Doctor from Akadama Drive is um, she can cure anything, any ailment. Like in the show, she literally gets bisected at one point and yet she heals herself and comes out with basically nothing but a, nothing but a scratch there's people that lose limbs she reattaches it there's situations where people should be mortally wounded and yet they survive because she patches them up so yeah and given her research as a doctor i think she could probably find a cure or at least something like dead rising where you have a pill to prevent the spread for a little bit so that's my introduction to her. Quick question. Um, How yes. does she do this? She I don't think it's magic. No, it's not magic. She grew up she was a doctor before she got a criminal record, I'll say that. So she has the knowledge of the medical field in spades. Okay. Okay, I'll go. Uh Is that oh. a panda? Uh, yes, I chose Dang. Gohin from B Stars, the back alley doctor from the carnivore market. He is a powerhouse to begin with, but that's not what we're here about. He's about he's a doctor. He's not only a doctor, but he's a back alley doctor. And you know what that means? He can work under adverse conditions to heal the people that he needs to. And beyond physical as well. He goes beyond physical. He can deal with your psychological problems as well, as he helps Lagoshi and a whole bunch of other people, I'm sure, in that area, dealing with the stress of I'm eating people. And what are you, what doctor you're really going to need more than a psychologist in the middle of probably the most traumatic apocalypse you can think of? Plus, expert with crossbow. <laughs> okay, I'm me. Is he? Okay, so I chose Ty from Persona Five. She is a doctor with her own clinic, 
so she does run an upfront medical business, but she also runs an underground facility where she manufactures her own medicines and comes up with her own formulas and stuff, and like engineers new medicines all of the time. So in a zombie apocalypse, she would have the practical know-how to make healing equipment from literal garbage. Okay. We going for the free-for-all? That's not sterile. Yes, you are. <laughs> if I may quote directly from the Akudama Drive fandom wiki, the doctor is a mad scientist who toys with people's lives for fun. She is a serial killer with a 432-year life sentence. That's someone I don't want Al, on my team, quite frankly. Was Hannibal Lecter Al, not available? I feel like you went into this with the intention to just tear the other choices down. Wait, well, wait, 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 wait. Goes, I have a... But, uh, yeah, that's... Yeah. But I, I will say to, to counter that... Yes. Please do. She's a mad... Yeah, you're right. Everything you said about her is correct. My rebuttal, and this is probably the only rebuttal, she's all about herself. She's all about preserving herself. So I think... She would do whatever it takes to save herself, which I think since she would she would not survive on herself, she would need the other members of the team to be with her. So she would want to, for her own sake, not everybody else's, but for her own sake, she would do whatever it can to keep everybody else alive. Well, you better hope so, because at any point in time, she could just be like, hey, I'm going to kill this person for the lols. That is not someone I want on my team. That's all I'm saying, man. I would also like to provide a counter-argument. I'm sorry, you're a judge. Are you allowed to do that? Titties. <laughs> <laughs> um, Elle, I would also like to question, what is yours actually a doctor of? Because you, you General focused medicine. a little bit more on the psychology side. But uh, if we are talking zombie apocalypse, I would want a doctor. Who he could is a doctor. Patch he is... and heal wounds over a psychologist. He can do that. He is a general medicine type doctor. However, he does also make focuses on psychology because it's very important. They live in a society where carnivores are not allowed to openly eat meat. It really messes with you as a person and in your own sense of identity. And honestly, beyond patching people up, which he can easily do and has done, you have you also more to want worry people... about in a zombie apocalypse than your mental health. Oh. It is kind of oh. the back burner. Max Brooks, writer of the Zombie Apocalypse Survival Guide in World War Z would definitely disagree with you. Psychology is going to be a huge thing. Do you realize the zombie apocalypse is not going to be Psychology a week. It's going to be is years. For years the of trauma. It is for after the battle is already No, over. it is for right in the middle of it. Because guess what? The battle is not going to be over for years. You in are going to be in of this it, forever. You are in active traumatization and also probably shut down. And processing those emotions would be detrimental to you in the middle of that active trauma. There's a reason He's we doing... shut it down to process for later. That's perfectly fine. He does field medicine in the field. But when we get back to base, you need someone to talk to, and he's going to be your guy. Or you could talk to the person who makes experimental drugs that uh, don't even know if they're going to work. Or a serial killer. Her drugs do work. Her drugs luckily work. She experiments and uses people as gay people. Correct me if I'm wrong. Correct luckily. me if I'm wrong. Her nickname for the protagonist of Persona 5 is Little Guinea Pig. He I just agrees I don't know that you guys to test her medicine in I'm return sure, well, for you know accessing what? I, that medicine illegally. I've I've seen her. I'm sure he agreed to plenty, but I'm just saying, oh, yeah, you know, no, you guys seem to have weird kinky shit that goes You guys on seem <laughs> to have picked people who uh, these doctors seem to have some sort of god complex going on, having a little uh, power over some people. I don't know that that's good for your team. Her. It wasn't a god complex for her. Her thing Well, maybe not was, her specifically. At least one person has a god complex in this trio. She ran the underground clinic to give care to people who may not otherwise be able to access that care. What do you think Panda's doing? Sorry, Gohan. And He's a panda. I have to call she him She is making medicine more affordable and accessible. 
I am totally by researching down for that. alternative ways to make it. And, and she's am... very successful about that. So she would be able. Can your doctor in the middle of an apocalypse where pre-made medicine is limited, be able to just pull from his surroundings to make his own? 100% he could. He's a back alley doctor. He's used to working with very little resources and adverse conditions to help his patients get the best care that they can possibly get, both of the mind and of the body. He is the whole package plus crossbow. We're not counting the crossbow. I'm sorry. Can I get the judges? Do, do weapons not count anymore? I think we're just talking about medical right now, right? Fine. I'm talking about resourcefulness. He made, made that crossbow out of bamboo. Closing argument. But we're talking about the, her ability to be a doctor. I mean, my characters. Yes, Al is absolutely right. My closing arguments. Al is absolutely right about the mad scientist thing. I get that. But the character's name is literally named Doctor, and she can literally treat you and save you from anything. She, again, I want to reiterate, she literally got cut in half and still managed to heal herself perfectly healthy. So, yeah, uh, I, I think no matter how you get injured in the zombie apocalypse minus getting blasted into giblets, I think you'll survive as long as you have her on your side. Um, I very much appreciate the audacity of Envy just going, we're done here. This is my closing argument. I mean, we're pretty much in closing arguments at this point. Gohin has the medical knowledge that you need to heal your body. He also has the medical knowledge to help your mind get through what you're going through. Plus crossbow. <laughs> it's, I'm sorry, his crossbow is so cool. I can't it is not a cool bring it crossbow. up. crossbow, I'll give you that. So Tai would be able to literally be able to pick through the garbage during a zombie apocalypse and make sure you had not only the medical knowledge about how to save one, but the actual resources to do it. There would never be low resources with her because she could literally just pull them out of her ass. Ooh, Ooh butt medicine. All right. Along with some other kinky shit, probably also out of her ass. You know who gets really kinky? Go in. He's got so much porn. Mm. All right. That's canon. <laughs> Judges. So. One quick second before you actually get into it. L, did we do the same character again? I don't think we did. No, does yours really. use a crossbow? <laughs> does yours use a crossbow? Because if she does, oh my They're god. Kinky back alley doctors. <laughs> Could have gone with Kill Kill and had a pervy back alley doctor. Mm. Anyways, go ahead, judges. Alright. So um, Hmm. As far as the doctors are concerned. Y'all pick some pretty shitty doctors. <laughs> what? <laughs> Thank you. I mean, if you ignore mine with her overt sexualness towards a child, <laughs> she's fine. It's very concerning. No, it's very uncomfortable. My guy's just a good guy. <laughs> Trying to help people out. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> this girl's kind of a pedophile. No, no, it's okay, because the kid's a pimp. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Like, in persona, he literally, like, he will walk up to women and just be like, yeah, no, you in my hair, I'm now get on your knees. Okay, he doesn't go that far. But in how far games, will the judges go? Do. How far will the All judges right, go to determine to make this winner? Uh, okay. Y'all uh, just need to stop talking. Like, It's seriously. one in the morning and you're all so <laughs> anyway, loud. Anyway, you can go. No, two uh, of you are loud. <laughs> I'm trying to, like, narrow it down, like, at least knock off one person. Like, I feel like everybody made good arguments as to what is wrong with the other people. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I'm trying to figure out who's the what was, best. What was wrong with mine? Um, so, I'm concerned, because we have a serial killer. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. A, a pedophile? <laughs> yeah. And, um, a panda with a crossbow. <laughs> Wait, are you saying that pan being an animal is a negative here? No, it's okay. just an odd choice. Your choices in the zombie apocalypse are slim, okay? I feel like I'd no, feel- No, panda's thick. 
I would feel the safest with the panda. Yeah, because at least this panda has a crossbow. <laughs> Uh, no, 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 no. We said the crossbow does not count. This is about the medical the thing. expertise. We're, la- we're allowing... Equ- Did I not mention we are allowing equipment? Oh, yeah, whatever they have on them. Yeah, it's a crossbow. But I- this is supposed to be about whether or not they would be the best doctor. Yeah, I hey, think... Man. And I'm thinking about the doctor thing. I think the problem is we have the serial killer and the pedophile. Yes. <laughs> and then the panda's kind of okay. He just likes porn. I don't know. <laughs> Crossbows are good for, for your mental health. It's cathartic to shoot them. What was that, CC? Please get closer to the mic. I'm sorry. Uh, it's cathartic to shoot crossbows. You can count that for mental health. Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. It sounds like on a technical level, maybe Envy's is the most skilled with being able to stitch herself back together, but she could, as Al said, maybe randomly kill somebody. I don't know how trustworthy she is. So it's yeah. like... I don't know how I feel about that. If we're disregarding the pedophile thing, then Cozy's, yeah, making, like, the resources is helpful. I'd say, like, the panda technically has the least, like, technical skills compared to the others, but he feels the most, like, I could trust you. I don't know. I feel like I would want... Here's the thing with me. I want to be able to trust my doctor. A little bit. Um, yeah. That is very unrealistic. How how what much that do you like? trust your actual doctor? You okay, it's unrealistic, but I um, would like it if it I, was true. Cozy, if I'm going to be really honest, I actually do trust my doctor. Hey. So. <laughs> what is that like? Yeah. Um, it's actually not that bad. <laughs> so, so do we have a ruling? I mean, I don't know. I'm going in with the panda, so... <laughs> yeah. I can agree with panda. Point to Al, I guess. Panda for the win. <laughs> okay, so now, according to the prompt, we're moving on to the speed fighter. I believe I'm leading this one, right? Yes. My speed fighter is Kenshin Himura from Roni Kenshin. He is the wandering samurai, the... Uh, he is known by many as Batosai the Manslayer because he, uh, well, helped bring in a new age in Japan by killing over a hundred people, after which he vowed to never kill another person again. He is a master of the Flying Heaven Governed Sword style, which in the English dub was called the Supersonic Sword style, so if you want to talk speed fighting. He is a extremely mobile, highly acrobatic individual who can hit you before you even realize it. And not only that, he's one of the nicest goddamn people you will ever meet. Yes, he is. Okay. I went with Isaiah from Durabara. And you know what? I'm going to bring it up before Al does because I know he's going to try and hit home on the... Isaiah has a god complex and it's fine. But he mainly fights with blades. Uh, what specific kind of blade really depends on the day. And he is very flexible. He is very fast. Like, he is more about how quickly and how many hits he can score on an opponent. But he is also strong with his blades. He can stop a stop sign with a knife. Um, my speed fighter is Levi Ackerman from Attack on Titan. I mean, obviously, I think everybody in this podcast is familiar with Levi. Uh, we obviously talked about Attack on Titan characters already. So we have, you know, the speed from the 3D maneuver gear. And uh, not only is he... I, I I don't think this is really much of a debate. He's not only the best person in the show with the 3D maneuver gear, he's also the fastest because there's a fight in the third season where he's basically a blur eviscerating his opponent at speeds probably greater than both of my uh, competitors' uh, choices. So that's why I chose Levi. Um, okay. I'm going to be real honest. I don't really think this is much of a debate, but go ahead and debate if you want. <laughs> wow. Just already picked yeah, your no, person. I'm so no, I'm I think it has Loving... to go to Levi, but yeah. I also would like to I'm bring up, we all brought knives. 
to a zombie fight. He goes so fast that it wasn't well, that was the category. <laughs> At least so, like we're taking it to have count I, the equipment again. And he does so. have guns. Yeah. Titan, right, Titan so. people do have guns. He has a, he can use pistols, so you know. So I, Levi I need, would have his three D so, maneuver gear. So hold up. I just I just wanna like just to be clear, Cozy, are you still in the fight or are you calling? I mean, no, I can argue about this, but like I, I already know. They're... So are you forfeiting or I just need to know moving no. forward? No, no, no. Okay, no? Okay. Uh, you already said it. God Complex, he's a manipulator. He's not going to work on a team. Plus a dinky little knife like that. Are you kidding me? You need a sword. You need a sword that can cut down a hundred men at once. Which is exactly what his style is all about. <laughs> Kenshin Humura. Talking about acrobatics. He can jump. He can fly all over the place. Okay, not fly. He's not supernatural. But he can jump like it's nobody's business. He can He can probably okay, even keep up with Levi if he had to. Have you seen what? Roni Kenshin? He can do it. What Izaya can do with that dinky little knife completely guess what he's never lost a fight. What are you talking about? I have a question. Lost are we considering the later books of Dorara? I don't think it was anime. Was okay, it? so we're only talking about the anime. Yeah, otherwise Goblin Slayer yes. wouldn't have been in here. All right, I'm gonna, okay. Then that's fine. You know something. I just... Does he lose all of his arms and legs or something? He, just, he loses <laughs> his ability to move at all. Oh my goodness. <laughs> like, okay. That would be not a bad permanent. version of Isaiah to have. <laughs> it was not permanent. Ah, so Yeah, but he just can't just run still. He could move still. later on, but... Okay. But Are his ability with one tiny here? knife. Well, <laughs> to some degree, my argument would be, and this is kind of just an argument a little bit against Levi, if he runs out of gas, he's kind of done. Hanji, at the very he's least, could have made some more gas. gas. He is fast, but how about up against someone who uses the so supersonic sword style? There's a reason that they called it that. He can move without being seen. He cuts you before you really even realize it. He is also still human. Yep. Like plus, four foot sword, two. plus I'm just going to throw speed. this out there. If we're talking if we're talking equipment and we're talking equipment here, thousand times folded Japanese steel katana versus the let's be honest here, exacto knives, the type swords that they <clears> use, <throat> they're designed to be broken. He's going to run out of those swords pretty quick and then Kenshin's got him. I'm sorry, they're not fighting. I'm just saying, though. Okay. Eventually, you're running out I'm, of those swords. I'm making like an argument for envy here, but um <laughs> Those no one makes an argument knives for me. are meant to cut through thick titan skin and bone. Oh, and a katana is, is not meant to slice argument? through. Do you realize that the Japanese katana they tested them by slicing through people, and like the the grade of the sword was often <laughs> determined by how many people you could slice through with a single swing. These things are built to cut deep, hard, and fast. Which is exactly what but he is. So were the weapons for Titans. It was literally meant to cut out their spine. You could easily cut out anyone's spine with a katana. Beyond the equipment, though, hmm. Himura is definitely the, the nicest person among all these people and will definitely gel with literally anyone that he's working with. He is the nicest guy. He's super pleasant. He helps you with the cooking, the cleaning. He helps make camp or whatever he has to do if he's out in the wilderness. He's got survival skills. He's just a sweetheart. Levi he helps does not make friends very too. easily. Isaiah, he, everyone fucking hates and he'll, Isaiah. Yeah, obviously you everyone need to get on his good side, Isaiah. but he does cook and he's clean, and he is very loyal to his camp comrades as well, so he would... Literally died for them as well, so that's all I'll say. So he would die for the doctor? Levi is, is a soldier. Argument? If he's willing to sacrifice himself, then yeah. But obviously he's got the speed, and also if he finds something dirty, he'll go supersonic speed to clean it up. Supersonic speed, much like the supersonic sword style that Kenshin Himura uses to take down anyone in his way. Including a zombie horde. Mm, I think my closing argument is I already know what your choice is, and I understand <laughs> I feel like we all fought and we bleed no matter what. <laughs> okay. Judges. Okay, so I'm trying to figure out who is technically faster between Roroni Kenshin and Levi. And I'm not actually sure because I I'm trying to remember. It's been so long since I watched Attack on Titan. Is he only fast because of the gear? 
He's got oh, he's the best little. reflexes out of any he, human. He yeah, yeah he, he knows how to maneuver in it to build up his inertia. Okay. But also he is fast outside of it. He grew up okay. as a thief. Like that he had true. to be very agile. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, so that doesn't help me narrow it down then. But thank no. you. <laughs> so I'm definitely tossing Isaiah out of the ring. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's but okay. That's a very tiny knife. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't know. Knife. <laughs> <laughs> he he does use other weapons. The knife is just really what they hammered home in the anime. Yeah. I see. That's true. I might say if I'm thinking of overall, maybe Levi would be a little more useful. But I-, I wonder if I'm just a little biased because I don't really know Roroni Kenshin very well. It's so, a good anime. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, I d- it's just like, yeah, so I don't know if it's that. I'm kind of leaning towards Levi, but I don't know. It might just be because my knowledge is limited of the other one. Levi's not like a nice dude, but he is a you soldier. Ask me like, questions if he you knows, want. He knows where he fits in this. Well, I feel like true. one of the things you didn't consider, Al, is that in anime, it it makes sense that he would be able to move past, like, the speed of sound. If we were to actually that in this debate, I feel like that would definitely fall under magical power because people yeah. aren't capable there, of there's doing no that. There's no magic. Like, of these three, mine's the only anime without magic. Yeah, since there's no magic, I would say you can still count it just like, I mean, nobody can stitch themselves back together like that doctor can, but we're still gonna count it because it's not magical, you know? So I think it still counts. Hmm. I'm gonna vote for Levi. Same. Yeah. Point for Envy favoritism <laughs> all right uh, all right who's um, who's going up next mascot it's uh mascots so who's who's first on this one uh that is me i guess this is kind of like a forfeiture right out of the gate <laughs> i wanted nina from full metal alchemist but they have zombies so i just went with that stupid fucking frog from I saw him in Lucky Star. Apparently he has his own show, though. (laughs) I love his face. (laughs) He's so cute. Uh, So I guess I kind of went a little too literal when it came to a mascot because, well, it... (laughs) You could never be too literal. (laughs) it's Legoshi, the main character from Beastars, and, well, he's a wolf, and what's a wolf but a giant dog... So, I will say, in my defense, it's not like Legoshi would be useless. He can be a good brawler. He's been in a bunch of fights, and he's got a very keen sense of smell. So, uh, yeah, that's my introduction. Okay. Um, before we move on to Ale, real question. Yes. Would the animals be able to be infected? I feel like we're going under that assumption, aren't we? Depends on the virus. We have not defined zombie rules because we will not get to know them ahead of time. I actually have a question. So yes. how are we defining a good mascot? Like, is it based on their usefulness, their cuteness? Like, what is it? Should I do my opening arguments first before we get into that? Or... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Right, right, right. okay I chose uh, B556 uh, from the uh, first Star Wars Visions episode, The Duel. He is yes. a, well, we're not exactly which uh, our unit, but he is an R series astromech droid, which uh, is a fantastic mascot. They're adorable. They don't speak, so they don't get annoying. They bleep and bloop. He's got a hat. He's a robot with a hat, plus tools and stuff. He's very useful. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what you're judging on. <laughs> yeah, neither do I. So okay, I feel like I the mascot say... is like for team morale. Like um, yeah. Andrew Coulson, he couldn't okay. do much. But team he kind morale. Of brought the team together. Potential when he died. usefulness. Also, just other things. Uh, one of one of these mascots has me a little concerned, but we'll get to that later. Uh, go ahead and debate, I guess. So I, my first thing, like you know, being metal, he's bite proof. 
Mm-hmm. Can we just say that out the gate? I mean, like, if yeah. you want a long-lasting mascot, you need one that's bite-proof in a zombie apocalypse. Mm-hmm. You also need to recharge him, though, at some point. I wonder if there's no power available. We, I don't know how long his uh, his particular... Maybe he's solar-powered. Things last. That's also a possibility. I mean, you know, the, the astromech droids are designed to go out in space and do a whole bunch of other stuff like that. You know, we're not necessarily doing that in a zombie apocalypse. Most things are getting really extreme. I mean, but, I you know, like you have to be able to do that. We definitely saw... You said this is from Star Wars prequel? No, no, no. It's from uh, Star Wars Visions, the Disney Plus uh, anime thing. He's, he's technically anime. I, I'm allowed to count him. We've definitely seen R2-D2 open up in Sun himself, so I think they're solar powered. Yep. We could Which, be dealing with a situation the situation with Revolution, I feel like though. The, it, just going off of our own real world technology, the majority of like satellite, space station, like what have you that goes up into space, has some degree of solar paneling to have a rechargeability to them. So I would say he's he's definitely got something. I would say in terms of cuteness and morale, uh, Sergeant Rororo would probably take that. He's involved in a cheer team in the specific iteration I pulled him from. Like, what better way to boost your morale? It's literally the point of cheerleaders. If I may, though, I looked up a little bit about Sergeant Frog. He is part of a scouting team that is trying to invade the Earth. But he's also uh, terrible at his job. He's extremely only... lazy and doesn't know no, what no, he's no. doing. No, no, no. I am specifically using the Lucky Star version. Well, I hate Lucky Star, so, you know, <laughs> I'm going to go with that he's a, an evil invading alien who is trying to kill all of us anyway. Alien zombie apocalypse. I don't want that. <laughs> that is not what he is in Lucky Star, so it's very lucky that you don't have to worry about it. Well, you know what else? I'm, I'm, I don't think the zombies are going to have to worry about him either. They're just going to, like, chew that thing. How tall is he, by the way? Oh, like... Is he a frog The size frog, of a like... head? Like, the size of a head. Like a cat? Boy, howdy, yeah. that's going to be... Like a cat. Big big for a frog, but not... Yeah. Person size. As far as legacy you goes, you know, yeah, you're trying... right. He's got some, some uh, physicality to him. But at the same time, he kind of goes into a frenzy every now and then and bites stuff and... I don't know if you should bite a zombie. That feels like a great way to have something bad happen to you. Yeah, but I... Well, here's the thing, too. What are zombies but rotten meat? If... I don't think you would want to eat a rotten meat. uh, Granted, yeah, dogs eat trash, but I think he has enough self-control to not want to eat rotten meat. What if it was a bunny zombie? Ooh, bunny zombie. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> nah, he'd just probably go into... Uh, nah, he'd just probably be sad. <laughs> oh, yeah, and that's another thing. He's kind of got, like, uh, a lot going on upstairs. Like, but he's still loyal, and he would he's still... He's still loyal, but, like, I feel like he's going to freeze up in a lot of situations. You know who what doesn't freeze up? A droid that doesn't actually have emotions to cause them to freeze up. You want to know what adorable. does freeze up? That droid's operating system can glitch. Windows 95, how dare you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know what operating system they're running on, but I have to assume that if he's qualified to fix spaceships mid-flight, I think that's a pretty damn good operating system. Windows okay, 95? But... Are you sure? <laughs> I just how? chose an operating system. I'm saying it was a joke. Windows Vista. Windows oh no. Vista. How dare you? <laughs> you put Windows oh. Vista on my astromech droid. <laughs> I don't know how great he would be at boosting morale. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I don't mean to go off on a tangent, but now all I'm thinking about is uh, R2-D2 just making the uh, the uh, 404 error sound. <laughs> <laughs> boom, boom. The old Windows <laughs> dial-up every time you have to reboot it. Yes. <laughs> oh, what huh. if he made that uh, old home theater sound? The really loud one? Oh, the CHX one, yeah. Uh, yeah. He could do that, and you know what that would do? Attract a whole bunch of zombies to him that he would not get bitten by because he can't be bitten, and it would allow the rest of the team an opportunity to take down those zombies. But zombies still have their hands, and, and and if they surround them, they can destroy him. Maybe they could, but they'd have to figure out how to, you know, 
take him apart, which I don't know how good zombies are at, you know, Ikea furniture, but I don't think they'd be able to do a, an Astro Get Electroid. Get hundred and thousand of the zombies to basically trample and stampede Are we them assuming just... that the, the entirety? We can do that, sure, but you know what else he can do? Rocket boosters, baby! <laughs> we have entered a really ridiculous space in these arguments. We I'm have! Let's it. close them out! <laughs> I, I mean, m what, pretty much what I said is my closing argument with for Legoshi. Okay. I feel like I've made all my points. <laughs> okay. Okay, so my closing argument, I feel like uh, it's really up to you guys to decide what uh, mascot in a zombie apocalypse would be more about usefulness or, like, boosting character morale and representing the group. Hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. The astromech, I could see being helpful, but spaceships and technology. This is the point of reference. Ah, uh, the frog but is the cute. Windows Vista L. <laughs> the frog is cute. He is so past Windows Vista. You have I no think. idea. He's on Windows 13. Oh, please be quiet. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, be quiet. The judges are talking. Ugh. Jesus. All right. My thoughts are the robot could carry stuff, probably has some, like, built-in settings. It would be handy. The frog would probably bring people together if he died. <laughs> Which is the point wow. of a mascot. What do you want as your mascot? Do you want the team pet or the team purse? I think... So are you saying he's Gucci? Like, Legoshi... I don't know. Like, would he accidentally, like, eat someone? I don't know. That's, like, I... on that's honestly <laughs> what I was thinking. I'm like, what if he gets hungry? And what if yeah. he wants to, like, bite my arm? <laughs> I'm a little concerned about not, not, him. Not to, like, pick on him because he's a predator. I'm trying not to do that here. But it's it's a bit of a concern. It's I don't valid. have anything coming around that's going to eat me. And he is a wolf. Um, yeah. So that's a thing. The frog is cute. So visually, he'd boost my morale. The robot, I would say he'd be useful. But... Is he equipped with the kind of technology that we'd be using right now? What kind of technology would we even be using in a zombie apocalypse? Whatever's what, available. What power grid is still running at this point? I thought we said he was solar. No, I mean, like, what all is he going to be able to interact with? Himself. He is I the mean, tools. I mean, obviously himself, but, like, the astromechs are made to, like, fix things. Like, what is he going to do? <laughs> What do you need done? <laughs> I don't know. Help get the power generator back up we and running. We need our morale fixed. How can he do that? Yeah. But the thing I is, think... is like, I guess I'm trying to think of it from like a perspective of, is he compatible with the technology we have right now? Are you is asking he if he's compatible? Like, can he plug into something? Or yes. like he's compatible like he can work things with his little arms? Like, compatible as in, like, he is literally able to, like, you know, go into the walls like they do in Star Wars and literally do the thing where they fix things. Okay, that one, no, but he also has his little arms to fix things, you know, like, analog, like we all have to do. Mm, I don't know. Um, I don't know, for me it is... But can he fix our morale? Yeah, it's between the frog and the robot for me, but I'm like, I think it does come down to what we're considering good for a mascot. I think the frog's a little bit more, like, cheerful looking and, like, cute looking. But, yeah, the robot might be a little bit more useful because I didn't really hear many arguments for what the frog can actually do. The frog is a cheerleader. It can't do shit. <laughs> Yeah, it so... to encourage people. It cheerleads and then it dies and it brings people together. Why do you want to kill the frog? That's what the mascot is. Okay. I mean, that's typically what happens in these kinds of shows. The mascot is our Agent Coulson. Yep. Okay. 
So did you guys pick one or? Um, <laughs> I guess by a standard mascot perspective, I guess I'd go with the frog. <laughs> yeah. That's just me. I can see that. I'll, I'll go with the frog. I can see it going either way, depending on how you define it. Okay. So. So I guess is the score three two two right now? Uh, I, I just is... need to take a moment. Cozy, you were almost arguing against your own pick and you won. <laughs> <laughs> it's the visuals, man. <laughs> well, Never should have no, put that so picture the up. Reason, <laughs> the reason I chose Carrero after you vetoed Nina is because I was pulling a cheerleading character, which is a very traditional mascot. Uh, Okie dokie. So it, it really would have came down to are, how they defined it. Are we moving into the last thing? Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess so. I yeah, do want to. I do want to ask one? how are how are we determining? Because like the last one is the guy who dies first. Is that really helpful to the team at all? I don't think this no, needs to I be think like this is a just debate. a for fun these category. Okay, so for all right, yeah, just like a hey. This is who I would kill first and why versus like an actual So then I guess thing. technically Al wins by a by the by a point then. <laughs> Wait, what's the score? Uh two it two. It was three, three two two. You had the three. Me and Cozy have two. Yep. Oh, cool. <laughs> yep. Well, I mean we might as well we can argue this last one though. Yeah. We took the time for it. Yep. Who's yeah. who's first? Should we Me. mention our honorary mention for this though first? Yeah, because we couldn't include this honorary mention because uh, they technically have yeah. magic. Oh, right. Um, he was perfect, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. for sure. This Envy. goes to Envy. Who was your pick? That bastard from uh, the Junji Ito collection. I forget his name. Suichi? But... Huh. Yeah. But he had witchcraft yeah. on his side. Yeah, <laughs> so we couldn't pick him for it. Which argu- so but we all, arguably we all would have been very be- difficult for him to die. Yeah. I thought also, you were going to say Kyube. Also an honorable mention, who at least me and Al could agree upon, but neither of us used. Shinji. True. Yeah, well, I you could have used him. I had someone from Evangelion already. I couldn't use him. Yeah. I had a Shinji Chu from uh, Fate Stay Night, so that's something. Let's just <laughs> list all the characters we hate. <laughs> well, no, well, we've... Basically, the person that I would kill in a zombie apocalypse... Based on the criteria that we set, is uh, Bone Drood from uh, Made in Abyss. Um, he, uh, without going into spoilers, because I recommend the show to anybody, um, he is a, another mad scientist serial killer, and he brutally experiments on children. And he does horrible things to children. Nothing sexual, but if, if you see the show, it's one of the most heartbreaking things I've ever seen in my entire life. So to him come in and get brutally mauled to death by a bunch of zombies, it would just warm my heart. So coming off of that joyous thing, uh, I chose Larry Butts <laughs> from Ace yeah. Attorney anime. Um, this is the like unluckiest guy ever. And like yeah. the, the title of this is Guy Who Dies First. Not necessarily Guy Who Deserves to Die, because I don't think Larry <laughs> deserves to die, but let's be real here. He's the first one gone. Like he's just beyond the worst luck, does not make good decisions. It's kind of dumb. And even for just the comedy element of it, he's going down first. <laughs> The thing is, is he always manages to come back every single game. Yeah. That's because Phoenix saves his ass. This time he's coming back as a zombie. Uh, And then we'll be the first one to get killed. Yeah, so he's the first one to die twice. (laughs) Let that sink in. Cozy? Okay, so I chose Hifumi from Danganronpa. Not only do I think just kind of necessarily based on his actual health, he really would be the first to uh, take a fall and die during the apocalypse. He's kind of perverted, so he deserves it. And also, if he trips and is the first one to die, it'll take them a while to get through him so his sacrifice (laughs) will not be in vain. Everyone else can get the fuck out. I see. 
So are, are we going to debate these ones? I don't really think there's did, much of a Nick, debate here. Did, did I don't Envy really know. I, but I if have you some really arguments. Want to, not that I'm saying that there isn't much of a debate, because I already have an opinion. I'm just saying that these are just a bunch of characters that y'all don't like. I I like Larry. I don't hate Larry, but I'm being <laughs> realistic here. He's going first. Like, oh I, yeah, I could have easily I'm gonna be picked real with people. You. I'm gonna be oh. real with you, Envy. I think yours is the one who's gonna last the longest. He's the boss oh, at the I end know. of the movie. He's got armor. He's got science. He's yeah, gonna survive. But most of the characters that Envy would not only want to see dead, but would also realistically die first were from shows that we weren't allowed to pull from. True, true. Thank you. But, like, I yeah. think that's that's kind of... Just for me, I was definitely going off of what the title of this was, Guy Who Dies First. I, I'm i in agreement with you. If there's someone of these three who definitely should die, it's yours. But he's... But that's, honestly, all the reasons you mentioned are all the reasons why he's lasting the longest. Yeah. Set oh, him out as bait. That pissed me off even more. <laughs> Set him out as bait. Honestly, you know who draw the short straw and be get and get bait? Larry. Yeah. He's, he's not lucky. Who? I mean, and very and unlucky. at His least for Lee your guy. He isn't either and he is also very stupid and very easily and, manipulated. And yet he made like, it through being what? Being manipulated three or four? is literally what gets him killed. <laughs> yeah, but he also made it like 3 or 4 rounds into a death game. He somehow survived that long in that sort of thing. Do you think Larry could survive three to four rounds in a death game? It's Larry. Yes. I love Larry, but my no, God, but Larry's going down. First, he was the first premeditated murder. The others were all kind of like moments of like rage. And honestly, Not... I, I'm looking at your guy. He's definitely rage inducing. I don't deny that. But he wasn't the first one to die because of rage. Yeah, he's got something going for him. Larry don't got nothing. Larry's got nothing going for him. He's going down first. He has friends going for him. He's got friends who are gonna have to put him down because he got bit, and that's gonna be their character development section. Larry's always dating models, though. What he's yeah. able to pull. I'm not saying he can't kick past his coverage, but. Has anything ever really worked out for him? No. Is it going to start in the zombie apocalypse? Probably not. No. I feel like the fact that you're in a zombie apocalypse really just proves nothing is ever going to work out for you, regardless of what character it is. Yeah. True, but beyond that, yeah, Larry's got it bad. <laughs> I don't know if there's anyone to have closing arguments. No. No. <laughs> I think that's Do the judges want to make a ruling? Or is um, this just a for funsies? This feels like it's for funsies. Who do the judges die. want to die first? I, uh, I almost, I really don't think that Bone Druid is going to die. I hate to say it, but I think he's going to live. Yeah. I'm not even asking just limited to these characters or the certain restrictions we set at the beginning. Judges, who would you want to die first in a zombie apocalypse? Um. You bet. Don't ask me that question, because <laughs> I, I don't usually have an answer for anything in that regard. Whether it's about a zombie apocalypse or, I don't know, the random question is, like, oh, who out of, like, this group of people would you throw into a fire out of one person if you had to pick? Like, that's just not something I ever <laughs> think about. I mean, among these three, that answer's obvious, but... You know, I don't know that we're choosing this so much as who's it going to happen to? Uh, mm. God. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Larry just, he's like a cockroach. He just keeps coming back. So I don't think he'd be the first to die. I don't know about the doctor. I mean, I don't know. I, I don't really know this character very well, but... I feel like he could haul himself up in, like, a laboratory for a while and, like, not have to deal with a lot of stuff. A Hifumi? Is that, that the last one's name? Yeah. I don't really know this character either. I did watch the anime for the first game for Danganronpa, but, I think, um... 
I think his talent was he's a fan fiction writer. Oh, that's yeah. not going to save you for <laughs> shit, hon. I should he's know. Your I write fan fiction. Um, so yeah, I would say he's probably the one to go. Yep. Probably. I'm saying if you shoot him in the foot and like knock him down, you have a wow. great buffer. Now you're really Listen. deciding who's dying first. I was just saying Larry's luck was going to get the worst of him. Did you not yeah. notice a trend? Like, all of all of my characters were kind of very willing to make a call that would sacrifice others. Dude, that's why I would kept bringing up your team. They don't play well together. <laughs> they would play well with each other because they all have the same personality. But they're all sociopaths. <laughs> Sociopaths don't play well with others, especially not other sociopaths. They're all gonna try to kill each other. Yeah. I well, was trying to go for team least, cohesion. Isaiah would order Setsuna around, which would make him very happy. But I feel like that was also the big one where you're like, he would fucking hate him and want to kill him. He wouldn't? No, I don't think he would. Well, I'm gonna have to see Gundam Zero Zero. It's very good. It's very. It's more of a drama, obviously. It's a political drama. It's like a think piece. I do want to point out, technically speaking, if we wanted to, uh, since Cozy won this round, we're technically tied. Yeah. No, mm, I, I don't think true. this counts. <laughs> Give me half a point. No. We want to draw this out any longer. <laughs> no. <laughs> Al is your champion zombie apocalypse. Cool. Uh, uh, I don't even nominator. <laughs> I don't know the words. Let's see. It's... I don't even feel like this is necessarily a champion thing. So our yeah, our we're final... all losers if the zombie yeah, you want to hear the dream happens. team. Our our final team would be Armin leading everyone, Spike uh throwing fists, Sosuke shooting a bunch of guns mm -hmm. with Senku uh kind of behind the scenes with now, all he's of not the sciencey shit. Oh, you Senku, um, not Setsu. I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, a fucking panda of all things. Fucking panda for the wings. <laughs> okay. Levi. Levi. Yeah. Levi. Levi for your Speedy Gonzalez. CC put Ravioli for some reason instead of his name. It's I will send you guys my list. It's I a gave meme. up. <laughs> And uh, for the mascot, which they have so lovingly notated as the Team Furry, is okay. a frog from outer space. Frogs don't have fur. Come on now. Think about it. <laughs> All right. Well, cool. If you guys enjoyed uh, doing this and watching it and all that other sort of stuff, you know, let us know because I'd be down for doing another one of these. Maybe not one as with as many categories because this took us a little while to get through. But uh, I don't know. What did you guys think? I think it's fun for the most part. I feel like it may be better in a smaller scale where we could do more in depth like i didn't know we were going into this with the intention of like discrediting the other characters more than uh saying why we thought our characters were the best so i didn't really do well, any that's a, research that's a debate i think al just plays dirty i didn't really do any research into the other characters i'm which sorry did makes Cece... it hard to argue did cc say i play dirty yes what is, what is the debate? It's, it's, am I not <laughs> I trying mean, to, to discredit your argument? I think, like, I think it's Al more was about literally just, own. like, Googling in the moment. I don't even think he yeah. researched anything. Like, I literally saw I, him just Googling. I had <laughs> like, a Google <laughs> Doc a up path. of notes that I that? had previously written down. Not only of their characters, but my own. Oh, wait, so you did research. I thought you were just Googling it on the fly. Never mind. No. Yeah, yeah. So I didn't do any actual research, but I feel like it would be really fun to do a smaller roster of more in-depth debate like that. I think yeah, I mean also this would probably be a lot easier to control um, if we were in person. Yeah, that's true. 100%. I so. Also not cool. in the middle of the night. Yeah. I also yeah. feel yeah. like um, maybe just with characters that we all do know, because again, yeah. 
it makes it a lot easier to understand like the debate and arguments yeah, yeah. i'm i'm sorry i like like i need a lot of clarification here for what's supernatural and what's actual like oh there's an actual in world explanation for this that like is concrete and not sort of abstract because I don't know half of the shows that you guys are talking about, so... Yeah, I mean, well, that's totally fair. I mean, niche. if you're going to be a judge, if you're going to be a judge, you got to have all the information to, to make a, a accurate call or a understandable call, you know? I think that was part of the problem where sometimes I felt like maybe I was just picking the character that I knew more about because I wasn't really sure about some of the others. So I think it mm -hmm. would really help to know all the characters. Yes, because you definitely had... Probably the hardest time, I would say, with the brains, right? That one I actually knew them all, which actually made it the easiest for me. Because I knew all the characters, but when I don't know them, it's yeah, like, Yeah, but eh, like, I don't know. that's the one that made you think the most, is what I mean when I say hardest. Yeah, I guess it made me think the most, but in a better way, you know? Yeah. Well, it sounds like this might become a thing at some point. Maybe not a weekly thing, but... Maybe, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see what uh, other sort of debate topics we can come up with. In the meantime, though, next week is November. Uh, we're going to be do going back to some of the normal stuff. I think me and Yin, we're going to discuss uh, Naruto Shippuden. We co covered Naruto before pretty extensively, and we're going to cover, what was it, the first 200 episodes of Shippuden? Yeah, through the pain arc. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to cover that and eventually get the other half of it it's it's been it's been a very busy month um but yeah so look forward to that among other things uh anyone else have anything to say before we head out um i would really enjoy hearing what the viewers thought if they agreed or disagreed with our choices yeah, let us know who, who you would have picked or who among our choices you thought were the best. And yeah, let us know. Let us or know. Or potentially if you yeah. felt like using Attack on Titan was not so fair. I don't know. Granted, they're not zombies and they're more like kaiju, but I was even thinking, That's... I'm like, mm -hmm. I mean, the threat's kaiju. We have to, like, yeah. I don't know, but sometimes they remind me more like a zombie horde and kind of mindless, so I don't know. I feel like it could go either way. But that's just me. I guess it kind of evened out since everybody picked one Attack on Titan character. Yeah, yeah. that was interesting. We all ended up like that. Mm. Anywho, happy all, Halloween. All I got to say is happy Halloween. Yes, thank you. Happy, <laughs> happy Halloween. Halloween. And we'll see you hey, guys next time. spooky but safe. See you next time. Bye-bye. Yep. Bye. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching, and if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell icon for notifications. If you enjoy this video, give us a like, and if you haven't already, check out some of our previous episodes, our daily gaming videos, or our parody series, Madoka Magically Abridged. See you next time!